And here's a very interesting example of how we can illustrate how we use Newton's second law. We have a wedge-structured wedge object on wheels that's being accelerated to the right, and we're trying to find out what the acceleration is equal to. On that wedge, we have a block, and there's no friction between the block and the wedge. And normally, if the wedge wasn't accelerating, the block would simply slide down and accelerate along the wedge there, along the, the slanted slide. And we can figure out what that acceleration would be uh, by saying, OK, if this angle here is 20 degrees, then this angle here must be 70 degrees. So let's call it theta equals 70 degrees. And then the um, force acting on that block would be the weight of the block. So we can say this is our mg acting downward. And of course, that would have x and y components. So we can draw the uh, components. I shouldn't call them x and y components. Here we tend to call them perpendicular and parallel components to the incline. So this would be the parallel component of the weight. And this would be the perpendicular component of the weight. And so since this angle here is theta, then this here would be mg times the sine of theta. And here this would be mg times the cosine of theta. So the acceleration along this wedge would be g sine theta, or 9.8 meters per second squared times the sine of 70 degrees. But if we accelerate this block fast enough to the right, then this block will feel that apparent force pushing it up the incline. And the way that works is that this block would feel a force coming from the right. And this force using Newton's second law would be F equals to MA. And since we're trying to find the A, we can say that A is equal to that force divided by the mass of the object. All right, we're again going to find the x and y components of this particular force, or again, the perpendicular and parallel components to the incline. So this would be the perpendicular component right there, and this would be the parallel component right there. And so since this angle here is 70 degrees, then this angle here is also 70 degrees. That would be theta equals 70 degrees. So we can say that uh, this would be the force times the cosine of 70 degrees. So this would be the F times the cosine of theta, which is F times the cosine of 70 degrees. Now, in order to cancel out this mg sine theta, we need a force here big enough to compensate for this force right here. So the block will stop sliding downward is if this force becomes as great as this one. So that's what we're looking for. So we're going to set those two forces equal to each other. If the F times the cosine of theta is greater than or equal to the mg sine theta, the block will stop sli sliding down. Matter of fact, if it's greater than, the block will actually begin to slide upward, so we maybe want to get rid of that possibility. We're just going to say when they're equal to one another. All right, if I now divide both sides by the cosine of theta, I get f is equal to mg sine of theta divided by the cosine of theta, which of course f is equal to mg times the tangent of theta. If I now plug that in here, I can find the acceleration. All right, I'm going to go ahead and plug that into my force right there. And I can say that the acceleration required to keep the block from sliding down is equal to the force, which is mg tangent of theta divided by m. Notice that the m's cancel out, so the acceleration is equal to g tangent of theta, which in this case is 9.8 meters per second squared times the tangent of 70 degrees. All right. So I have 70, take the tangent of that, and multiply that times 9.8 equals, and it looks like it's a big acceleration. The acceleration required is 27 meters per second squared. All right, so quickly again. Um, Normally, the forces pulling this down the incline is the force due to gravity acting on the incline. Of course, we have to find the component parallel to the incline, which is the weight times the sine of theta. We need some force to cancel that out. We realize that if the block is being pushed to the right, it has a sensation, a feel of a fictitious force pushing it to the left, which has the, ver the perpendicular and the parallel components to the incline. 
When this component becomes as big as this component, the block will stop sliding down. Since this component is the force required times a cosine of 70 degrees, we then set it equal to this, mg sine theta, solve for the force, plug it in here, and we get the acceleration. And that's how you do that problem.